<laughs> and I'm sorry, your name is Justin. 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 All right. This is Jackie within the Key of Change. I'm here with Justin from the Great Commission, and we are here at uh, Intensity Fest in Virginia. Um, what are some of the benefits of playing an all-day festival like this? Uh, my favorite part is I get to meet the fans. Uh, I feel like when you play like a, a concert at night, um, everything goes by so fast. But when you play these long all-day festivals, it's like a, it's a more intimate feeling, believe it or not, because you're able to walk around, and as you're going through the crowd, somebody will pull you and be like, hey, can I talk to you here or that? Or we're able to do signings or meet and greets, and we're able to, I mean, the fans are the reason we're out here in the first place, so that's what I like about it. Very cool. So what can fans expect from your live show? Uh, just We always give 110%, no matter uh, where we're playing, um, whether it's in front of five kids or 5,000 kids, we always just... We always play every show like it's our last. So a lot of people have come back and said, I've seen you guys five times. It's my sixth time seeing you or seventh time seeing you or so forth and so forth. I think the reason that is is because we offer something different every time. When you give your all, it's unique. It's sincere. It, the fans know that. So you definitely seem to make a lasting impression. That's awesome. Um, the metal and hardcore scene has definitely evolved from its very underground basement roots to something almost mainstream, but still yeah. not quite radio friendly yeah. all the time. Where do you think it'll go next? Uh, I think it's, you're going to see more hardcore bands and metal bands breaking into the mainstream. I mean, you have like uh, radio stations like K Rock, you know, and K Rock plays a lot of like heavy bands, like whether it's like a Day to Remember or whether it's um, you know Kill Switch Engage, they play a lot of stuff like that. So. You know, I could see it breaking into the mainstream. You know, you got groups like Sleeping With Sirens who are being on the radio, you know, will be listening to something, they'll pop on. So it's definitely been awesome. Plus, a lot of it's gone to online radio. I mean, I listen to Pandora more than I do the radio. So kids are able to tap in their favorite bands and find out about new bands and stuff. So It's definitely an easier way, I think. I, 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 I don't think about as often that I, that I use internet radio, but that's a really good point. Yeah, I use Pandora all the time. It's one of my favorites. Um, speaking of online resources, what's the role of social media in your band's success? Uh, it's huge. I love, love, love Instagram. I love Twitter. I run the band Instagram and uh, Twitter. I also run uh, my personal uh, social networking sites. A lot of times people have other people that are hired to run them. I run them personally. It's a good way to keep in touch with the fans, keep the fans up to date with what we're doing when we're home. I mean, when I'm not on the road rocking stages, I'm on set. I work in Hollywood. I do acting and stunt work. So it gives the fans a way to see, like, what I do in my personal life and uh, on the day-to-day, -day, you know. Plus, uh, you know, I work on some pretty exciting things. I just did Iron Man 3, so if you saw that, look for me in the biker bar. Um, yeah, look for me in the biker bar behind Robert Downey Jr. And I also did some stunt work on that, so, you know, crazy stuff like that. Yeah, you, it doesn't sound like you have a lot of downtime, not, not a lot of... Um... <laughs> the day before I left for this tour, I did a Boost Mobile commercial. I was like a SWAT team member, escorting the Chivas soccer team down the pathway before they run out on the field, so that was the day before I left for this tour. <laughs> when I get back, I'm sure I'll be working on, like, NCIS or Sons of Anarchy or something crazy like that, so... Very cool. So social media helps not only your band, but your career as well. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Um, have you made a music video? Has your band made a music video lately? Yeah. Uh, not lately. Uh, the latest one we have, I think, is called Draw the Line. If you go on YouTube, uh, look for Great Commission, Draw the Line. It should pop up. But uh, when we get back, we're planning on doing a couple new music videos. We have a new album coming out. So keep on the lookout for that. Add it on Facebook. Make sure you keep in touch. And, uh, yeah, something will be up soon. So. What are the benefits of making a music video? I feel like... For me personally, like, it's hard to describe, like, what our live set's like, you know, and even when we do music videos, we just, we give it our all, you know, stage presence, and, you know, just, you could tell that we really love what we're doing, you know what I mean, and uh, it gives the fans a way to see uh, how passionate we truly are about our music. When you listen to it, you can kind of hear it sometimes, but when you see it, it's a totally different thing, so. Very cool. Um, some bands use music as a tool to communicate. What are some messages you hope that you're communicating to fans? Uh, first and foremost, um, <clears throat> without Jesus Christ, uh, I wouldn't be doing music. Like, he gave me a second chance to do music, and I told myself that uh, if he ever gave me a second chance, that if he put a mic in my hand, that I would say something worth saying. So every single night I go on stage, regardless of the concert or the tour, and I share my faith in some way or form, or like what I believe, or how far I've come. And, you know, it, it's crazy because you go out there, and you know, I'm from California, and I'll say something on stage, and it'll affect somebody every single night in every single state we go to and they're from all different walks of backgrounds of life and different races and religions and you know even sexuality you know what I mean it's uh it's crazy like it's crazy to go to like somewhere like Minnesota and know that half the kids in the crowd are atheists but they're huge fans of my band but when I go up there and I preach there's something that they can relate to you know it's music brings people together and I love I love that so. 
it's it's very universal in that in that aspect. Um, and some bands or musicians also use their platform to sort of promote causes and charities. Is yeah. there any cause or charity that you'd like to work with or yeah. you have? Uh, we have actually every year around Christmas time we do uh, something, it's part of the We Still Believe organization. It's called Mosh for Food. Um, you bring a canned food or you bring in um, some clothes. There's another one called Keeping Warm in a Cold World also through the We Still Believe organization. But um, it's pretty much our hardcore bands like Ghost Inside, Sleeping Giants, Stick to Your Guns, Great Commission. And some locals will get together and we'll do a ring, a run of free shows. The only thing you got to do to get into the shows is bring either a sleeping bag, two bags of socks, or a whole bunch of canned food. And all the proceeds, every every drop of money that we get or any proceed goes straight to the homeless. So it's something we take part in like once or twice a year when we can. Something we're really passionate about because it's a way for our hardcore metal underground community to give back to our, you know, sometimes you go to shows, you think that's your only world, but there's a whole other world outside those walls, you know. Sometimes we forget that, and it's a good way to mend both, you know, bring them together. So, Definitely. That's a great way to make a positive change. Uh, another organization that uh, you work with is Psych, yeah. which is uh, one of today's sponsors of Intensity Fest. Um, are you smoke-free? Yeah, I do not smoke. Actually, I've never even been buzzed. I mean, I've never, never even been buzzed. Why is it important for you to not smoke? I mean, my father did it for many years, and I saw the toll it took on him. Like, uh, even how he coughs, you know? Like, when a normal person coughs, it's just like, you know. But when he coughs, it, it sounds like he's in pain. And a lot of that's due to his smoking habits. And honestly, personally, man, I just, I don't want to be bound to anything, you know? I don't want to have to know on a weekly basis I have to go buy alcohol or I have to go buy cigarettes, you know? Like, it's not something I'm a part of, man. I, I'm all about freedom, you know, freedom in worship or freedom in just who you are and, you know. I just don't want any part of that. Plus, it's gross, man. It's so gross. People that smoke, it's just, it's gross. You know? And in any fans out there, if you smoke, stop smoking. You live longer, you can go to more concerts. So. That's a great reason, right uh, there. Um, in, in California and in L.A. specifically, it must be tough with sort of the peer pressure and, the, and sort of the images that um, yeah, you're sort of pressed with. I get smoke weed on the daily or... Do I want a cigarette or do you want to go drinking with my friends? I'll go to clubs. I'll go to, um, not clubs, clubs, but like I'll go to parties and stuff like that. And I don't have to partake in anything. I don't drink. I don't smoke. You know, I just hang out. You know, people are people and, uh, you know, that's how it is. I mean, I just, I stick to my convictions and I feel convicted not to do those things. So it's easy for you to deflect? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty confident person. So somebody comes up like, hey, do you want to smoke? I'm like, no, thank you. I like to live longer. So. That's a good comeback. Keep that one in mind. In case there's peer pressure, keep that one in mind. I like that. Also, don't smoke to fit in. It's the dumbest thing you can do because you think about it, like, most of these people that smoke, like, years down the line, like, their health is so terrible. Like, it's they're garbage. Like, it sucks. I feel bad for them. I've seen it happen to my own father, so I'm, like, speaking from experience, you know? So, I mean, if you get tempted and you feel like it's the cool thing to do, there's other cool things you can do, you know? Like, go see the Great Commission live and give me a high five. So, do that instead. See? Well, you live longer, so you can go see more, more uh, of the Great Commission. So what's up next for the band? Uh, we're actually working dates back home. We just finished a tour with Nothing Till Blood and Those Who Fear. Check those bands out. And we just got off tour, the Screen the Prayer tour, which had, like, Gideon and Impending Doom and a bunch of other, Wolves of the Gate, a bunch of other awesome bands. So, um, yeah, we're going home, probably going to work on some new music, um, release a new album, hit the road again. So I think that's kind of the cycle. So, yeah. Catch me on your favorite TV shows, Mindy Project, Two Broke Girls, Sons of Anarchy, NCIS. I was in Iron Man 3. Look. He's everywhere. So stay tuned for more from the Great Commission and more from Justin pretty much everywhere. This is Jackie with InTheKeyOfChange.com. All right. Awesome.